helpful because that helps everyone. And like, yeah, I hope it's helpful. What? Yeah, I hope it's helpful for them. Oh my god, I think it will be. It's I helpful for me. I actually had so many people like DM me being like, okay, like I want to like do red mage. And I know that it's like really good in Boja, but I I like just slammed with level 80 and now I'm super freaking overwhelmed and I have no idea what any of these skills are and people say red mage is like pretty like good and solid to play and I just don't get it and have all these pieces fit together and yeah I'm hoping that this can really answer those questions for those people because trust me I've, I've actually gone a lot of that so um yeah I hope that that makes sense to a lot of people and I totally know people are gonna like clock me on the footage and just be like you just didn't read your gcd right that's that's true i i i suck all right so today here we're having a, a red mage level in dungeon here i'm using reposty 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 see this this, this is the the red mage ability reposty. you see I, i'm smacking them look at this look at this imp i smack it it dies i say <laughs> look at you you dirty imp reposty <laughs> yeah, reposty. Beat my reposty. I do. Corpse of corpse. Get it at level 19. So we do the Tam Terra Deep Croft. You can use reposty. See? Reposty. What the heck is an A-Row? I, I think it's, it's in one of those bars. You go to the, the convenience store, you buy them. It's like a chocolate bar. It has like the bubblies in it. It's yummy. Exact. I don't know yes. what the heck a Ver Arrow would be. It's I don't like know. It's a very good arrow chocolate. Vero. Reposte. Trey, I do not reposte you. <laughs> With my pokey poke. Look how long it is. It's going to poke somebody's eye out. You know, your mother always said, you know, you're going to poke you're in someone's eye with that thing. I don't think I'd be allowed to have that. That'd be dangerous, oh man. Talk about your love of reposte. I'm using reposte, you see, because that is how it is pronounced here. Because I look at this thing small, unmuscular, weak. Me, strong Rothka, reposty, you die. <laughs> hey everyone, and welcome to Cole Evix's most low effort content. I'm allowed one of these once in a while, right? <laughs> Let me know in the comment section down below. And so my friend Nimit has just, and I just butchered his name intentionally, has just boosted a red mage to level 70 in order to really take advantage of the bows which in the southern front because res mage is super super good although if you kept up to date with my video you know that red mage is probably gonna have its revives heavily restricted but in all forms of other bows in southern front content it's gonna be super good as well as red mage is currently performing really well on ff logs it's just very powerful utility all around red mage is one of the most powerful dps in my humble opinion at this moment and so this is just me really doing an on-the-fly lesson and just like recording it and I it's not by no means an ultimate guide it is not gonna go into the super details of the opener what's meant more is just a primer and so here's my low effort content <laughs> so um, yeah so yeah thanks for uh, showing me red mage cool I just figured you know uh, red mage would be a good thing to run in uh, the Bojan Southern front since I'm going to have to be uh, farming a lot of that to unlock the new content for this patch. So I might as well level, level something while I'm doing it. Exactly. So yeah, what is the uh, opener that you recommend for, for this class? Definitely. So I am not actually going to go into the opener, but I am going to like just go and start with like the basics. So Jolt 2 is going to be a spell that if you hover over the tooltip, says that it has a cast time of like roughly two seconds. And so this is going to be the core of all of your single target. So what that did was it applied a buff to yourself called Dual Cast. And so that makes it so that the next spell will require absolutely no time to cast. And so if you hover over the tooltips of Ver Arrow or Ver Thunder, you can actually see that its cast time is like almost 5 seconds. But remember, like, my character is not best in the slot right now, so I have a heck of a lot of spell speed. I have like 3k spell speed, which is not normal, so it's like 5 seconds normally. And so Jolt 2 into Ver Arrow or Ver Thunder is really going to be a huge difference because that gets rid of the cast time. And so people would sometimes ask, like, why would you want, like, Ver Arrow or Ver Thunder in the first place? Because, really, it's hitting really heavy. Like, 370 potency is just a big boop of damage. It's, it's really a good spike. 
So Jolt 2 is like 290, and then that gets an additional 80 potency for, for Arrow and Burst Thunder, so you definitely want to make sure you weave them, rather than just do like Jolt 2, Jolt 2 spam, which you can technically do, you're losing 80 potency that way. So Jolt 2, 2 for Arrow for Thunder, is that kind of making sense right now at that? Jolt 2, Varero, and Burst Thunder, okay. Yeah, so one of the main differences between these spells, it looks like uh, they generate something called Black Mana, or white mana. So uh, why would I want to use, you know, Verero versus Ver Thunder, and like what would the uh, situations be? Where absolutely, I'd, you know, absolutely. One, two, yeah. Good question. So Verero is going to generate something called white mana, or what is it actually called? Yeah, it's literally called white mana. Yeah, white mana. Yep. <laughs> I should know that by now. Black, white mana is going to just fill up one side of your gauge. Like on my gate, my side of the screen at least, you can see that I have this UI gauge here. Which, uh, you can, like, move it around for anyone that's wondering, why is it there on your screen? Like, you can move it all around in your HUD elements and your layout. I just keep it there because it's super easy to see. Actually, I want it a little bit higher than that. Because it's super easy to see and really accessible. And so what you can see on my gauge is it has a hundred and a hundred. And then you have a white bar and a blue bar. The blue bar is technically meant to represent black, though. And this is kind of paying homage to the fact that red mages really have its roots in both white mages and black mages magic types. And so Ver Arrow is going to give you white mana, and this is going to fill up your gauge, and then Ver Thunder is going to give you black mana that's going to fill up your black gauge, which you can later use for spender abilities that I'm going to get into in a little bit. But really what you should be doing through the entire time of having this gauge up is you should be making sure that the amounts are really balanced and that if you hit 100 in, say, just white mana or 100 in just black mana, that you're really expending the bar so that you don't just, like, basically waste all of your casts building up a resource that can't be built up further because 100 is the cap. Anything above that is really just to waste. Is that kind of making sense? Uh, yeah, that, that, that could make sense. So right now, I don't know, I have 100 white mana and 35 black mana. So what, what would we want to spend white mana on to kind of do that? Yeah, so you actually can't spend one mana type at this point of the game at least. But you need them, you spend like both of them in the same amounts. Such as, uh, uh, I'll just show it right now is you have, uh, actually, let's get into that in a bit, but basically you can't spend one type of mana, but it's like the same amount of both. Like if later I'm gonna show you hot but tooltips that sh spend like 30 white mana, 30 black mana at the same time, then 25 black and white, and then 25 black and white again, and that is going to be like the same amount. So if one is super ahead of the other, you shouldn't just try and like spend one, but instead you should try and build the other up. So kind of like to your problem, it's like, how would you approach that problem then? Like to balance it out? Yeah, I'm not really sh sure right when I want one that's... Like, I'm getting more white mana now, so I probably want something that's giving me black mana. So I have to look at my spells and see see what does that. Absolutely. So what you'd be doing here is you'd want Verse Thunder. Yeah. Oh, it Please? looks like it, yeah. Yeah, and so that's just going to build up your black mana. So Ver Arrow and Ver Thunder are very selective in where they actually build up the mana. And so if you're too okay. much in one type, like too much white, then you're just going to go Ver Thunder to build up the black. And if you're too much in the black, then you're going to go into Ver Arrow in order to build up the white. Is All that right. in good? Yeah, that makes sense. Yes. So basically the rotation would be like Jolt, and then just rotate Ver Arrow and Ver Thunder to get both mana types up. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so now I want to build up on that concept a little bit, because like this is going to be like the baseline core rotation for you, I, even though it's not really rotation, it's more proc-based. So I'm just going to mm -hmm. go Jolt, and then for Thunder, and do that over and over again. I'm looking for a proc. Okay, so I just got a proc of a buff called Verfire Ready. And so we have two more spells that you can think about as kind of like further chains of Ver Thunder and Ver Arrow, which are going to be Ver Fire and Ver Stone. And so these are weaker spells than both Ver Thunder and Ver Arrow, but the thing is they have the same cast time as Jolt, but they are definitely hitting harder. They're hitting 20 potency harder than Jolt too. 
as well as they are making it so that you get a lot of white mana or a lot of black mana. And so in particular, I'd say Ver Arrow to Ver Stone. So Ver Arrow is going to develop white mana. Ver Stone is going to develop white mana. And Ver Arrow is going to give you procs of Ver Stone. And likewise, Ver Thunder to Ver Fire, same thing, but for black mana. Is that kind of making sense on that? Yeah, that, that, that kind of makes sense, yeah. Perfect. So really... The baseline, absolute base, is that you go Jolt 2 to Ver Thunder or Ver Arrow, keeping your mana levels balanced until you get a frog of Ver Thunder or Ver... I mean Ver Fire or Ver Stone. Okay. And so for me, I just got a proc of Ver Fire. And so instead of Jolt 2, when I get a Ver Fire proc, I'm going to get Ver Fire and then go into Ver Thunder or Ver Arrow because that's still going to give me the dual cast and so I can just like, cycle that and if I get lucky with procs like I just did in my recording I can ver fire and I don't even touch jolt like if if I have a proc of ver fire or ver stone I don't even touch jolt at all not at all is that kind of making some sense oh yeah exactly because ver fire will do um, more more uh, potency Exactly. 20 more potency, and it's going to give you a lot more mana. Uh, how much is that? Yeah, it's going to okay. give you six more... Well, it's three more mana, but it's of a very specific type. Overall, I would always choose it over Jolt in almost every circumstance. Of course, there's a few right. exceptions, but... Yes. Super mega okay. optimizations. Cool, cool. So now, like, I have my uh, mana gauge full. I have 100 uh, white and black mana, and I have my little, like, red gem here lit up, so... I'm assuming that means I can use some sort of a powerful, like, spending ability. Absolutely, absolutely. And so there are really two chains that you can do. You either want single target or AoE. And so, kind of like how in World of Warcraft, uh, for the record for anyone that doesn't know, like, Nemeth does come from World of Warcraft, where he is currently in a guild that is going after Cutting Edge. And so he's definitely a very, very talented player. So, kind of similar to World of Warcraft, though, you have like builder spenders here but your builders were all what we showed like the jolt two to the ver arrow for thunder ver stone ver fire those are your core builders for single target and so now you can spend them either on single target or aoe and so we're just going to focus on single target for this point of time and so what you actually want and yes that is the dash we're going to get into that in a bit but you have three <laughs> abilities enhanced riposte enhanced okay. zerwachu I'm going to butcher these names. Enhanced Repost, Enhanced Zerwachu, then Enhanced Redoublement. And so that is your one, two, three combo of spenders. Mm -hmm. And so that is the most basic one, two, three combo. And I'm just going to do it here. So Enhanced Repost, Enhanced Zerwachu, and then Enhanced Redoublement. And you need to do them one, two, three. And then after that, you're going to notice that you have your Ver Thunder and that you have your Ver um, Arrow changed to Ver Holy or Ver Flare. And then you can cast that, one or the other. Really, at this point, it doesn't make too much of a difference. And then you get Scorch from Jolt 2. And that is going to be your most powerful single target, like, expender of all of that mana. So that's really your build-up point. Actually, at level 70, I don't know. Would you have... Scorch at level 70? Let me see. No. Scorch, Scorch is no. at level 80. <laughs> I just oh, okay. checked my book. I'm so sorry. But eventually you build up to that point. But yeah, just going over that, that's really your single target. Your most core single target is you build up your white and black mana and you keep them really balanced and then you spend them into that combo here. And so I'm just trying to build up my mana rate. Right. And likewise, if you don't get procs, it can be a little slower. Like, I'm not having good procs here. I'm going to show you some abilities that you weave in after that. But I'm just building up my mana now. And so, the numbers that you should go for really here is 80 and 80. Both of them, both white and black mana, should be above 80. And so, that is how much mana, or white and black mana, that you need in order to use your 1, 2, 3 combo of Enhanced Repost... Enhancer watch you and enhance redoublement. And then you go into Verholy or Verflare. I'm doing Verholy now. 
and then at level 80, Scorch. And that is your single target spender combo. Is that seeming good? Do some of that for me. Okay, yeah, so here's what I'm doing. I'm just going between Jeweled Ferrer over Thunder and using uh, some of the other abilities. Okay, there we go. Now the single target combo I can do, I gotta get in there. And boom. And then we will go over Flare. And really, Verholy versus Verflare is you're just going to get more mana of a particular type. But ultimately, I mean, I'm sure that there is some micro-optimization somewhere that I am not fully aware of at this point of time. But to me, it's really the same. It's just, at the end, you're just getting more either black or white mana. And so I'm just going to do it once more. And then poof. And so yeah, it says that I increase white mana or black mana by 21. And so really, it's just like... Spend it on whichever one. It really doesn't matter. And scorch. Boom. And so, All is right. that making sense? That's good. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, honestly. Like, and now I see my other abilities. Like, I have Verkir, Verraise, yes. all these. So, so I'm assuming I can go instant raise, right? Just cast Jolt, and then oh, yeah, boom. Exactly. Instant That's raise why all day. This mage is so good. Is because by default, Res has what, like a seven second cast time, something like that. My hotbar currently says instant because of the thing. Oh, it has a nine second cast. I'm like, is it seven or nine? Fudge. I mean, fudge. <laughs> fudge. I said fudge. I'm gonna have to, like, hopefully catch that in editing and bleep it out. But yeah, and so that's the core. And so, utility abilities is yes. You have Verkir, which is very good because it's actually gonna give you actually 700 potency at the. So it's 350 and 350 potency, and so the abilities like Astrologian's Benefic and stuff do like only like 400. Uh, wait, I can't do that. Oh yeah, because I'm in combat. Sorry, I'm so foolish. Uh, let's get out of that reset. Wait, I'm trying to reset the dummy enmity, but it's not resetting. Am I lagging? <laughs> no, no, I can hear you. Weird. Why is the reset not hmm. working? Oh, it did work. Okay. But yeah, if I go into, like, Benefic of Astrologian, that is going to be 400 Cure Potency, and so 350 is really, really close. As well as Benefic 2 is literally 700 Cure Potency. And so when you're a Red Mage, actually casting two of those at once is actually pretty huge. And so, just like... Ooh. And so, do I find myself ca casting Verkir all the time? Not really. But I have definitely, actually, pro... Oh god, I don't want to say too often, but... There, when I'm playing Red Mage consistently for a long period of time, there is usually, like, two or three instances in a week, sometimes more, where I'm like, yeah, Verkiring the tank literally saved the party, because it's not a tank like a Paladin or a Warrior that could, like, self-sustain, but instead you see, like, the Dark Knight spamming, like, the Blackest Knight and its HP slowly going down, and you're like, oh, god, please, god, no. <laughs> and so it All does right. actually save that. But yeah, those are yeah. gonna be two of the most powerful utilities that they have. Alright, yeah, so that kind of makes sense, so that's probably what I want to do in, like, Trials and stuff. Now, uh, if I'm like a dungeon and we're like fast pulling stuff, so like, what what do I want to do for AOE? Um, sure, but actually, let's reel back and get a few more single target abilities in because there are some right. abilities that are very important. And sure. so let's go over off global cooldowns. And so I actually have them at the top of my bar. And so this is going to be flesh. This is going to be acceleration, contra sixt, magnification, and embolden. And so. Hmm. I just wanted to cover all these because they are actually huge in the single target rotation. And so yeah, all of these cool. abilities are off of the global cooldown. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, flesh, displacement, I'm just trying to find them on my bar. Okay. Oh yeah, there's those two, yep. Okay, cool. I was going to go into movement abilities later, but absolutely. But, uh, so they are just off the global cooldown, and so that flesh is just massive single target spike of damage. And it's at 25 seconds cooldown, so... Really, you just weave it in whenever it's off. Contra 6, kind of the same deal. It has a slightly longer cooldown, but it is actually AoE. And so it is very, very powerful, and you should absolutely be using these off the global cooldown constantly. 
and so flesh is about to come off the global cooldown so I'm using jolt and then I am using for arrow and then I have some space because I was an instant cast and I'm waiting for the global cooldown to come around and I just weaved in flesh there all right awesome so would you try that for me And okay, you used to I... jolt too, and then you want to do like a for arrow or. Yeah, so. Oh, okay. Let's see if it'll go now. Perfect, exactly. And yeah, you just yeah. weave that between that global cooldown. That was perfect. Sweet, awesome. And then you do the same yeah. thing for Contra 6. So it should be like bam, bam. Oh, yeah. Bam, bam. And then all of that was between the global cooldown. Just weaving that. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure everything's all set up in a space on my bar that's easy. Oh, exactly. Okay. That's why I kept it to, like, the original keys up here, because I'm just like, yeah, I... My answer would be me. <laughs> Are there people that can actually, like, actually, you know, without using, like, macro keys and things, press, like, 7, 8, 9, and 0 effectively? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh my god, I've really? seen some people with like freaking behemoth sized hands that can easily reach, and I'm like, holy crap. Not okay. me. Not me. I am envious. Like maybe six, okay? On a like good maybe day. Maybe six. Okay. Yeah, I can do six, but it's not comfortable, but it, 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 I can do it. <laughs> so yeah, just doing that, jolt two, and then off the floor with food down. And so that's so really think... going to be that burst. Yeah, you need to get sponsored by Razor so that we can get Naga Mouses for free. <laughs> <laughs> if Razor, if you are listening, uh, please send us a uh, the new uh, Chroma RGB uh, oh Naga Mouses. Thank yes, you. Please, yes, please. <laughs> oh my god, please do it. Twenty twenty has been mean to me. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm gonna get canceled. No. <laughs> So now that we have covered those two abilities, now let's talk about acceleration. And so earlier I was talking about how Ver Arrow and Ver Thunder could give you procs of Ver Stone and Ver Fire, right? Uh, yes, yes. So what if I told you you have an ability on a one minute cooldown that will guarantee that your next three casts of Ver Arrow or Ver Thunder would give you a proc of Ver Stone and Ver Fire? That sounds pretty awesome. And so that's acceleration, and so I'm just going to use it on my screen, and pop it. And okay. then every time I use Ver Thunder or Ver Arrow, it's going to give me proc. So I just use Ver Thunder, so I got Ver Fire proc. Bam, into Ver Fire, instant cast Ver Arrow. Ver Arrow gave me Ver Stone proc. So Ver Stone, and then instant into Ver Thunder. And then acceleration gave me an instant Ver Fire proc. And so that really is actually a solid DPS boost, because Jolt 2 versus Ver Fire and Ver Stone is giving you 20 potency boost as well as it's giving you like three more total mana but specifically in one type so right now on my screen at least i'm behind on black mana and so me focusing into ver fire right now with the ver fire procs is really going to be a huge advantage to me and so it really just lets you it helps you funnel in and it is actually a very important part of the actual opener that we're not going to quite go into in this video but it is like okay. super important. It's like funneling your MP, or I mean not your MP, your like black or white mana in a particular direction. So I'm just going in, I'm going hand like that. And then I'm just gonna cap my both of my mana at 100, which you should never do. You should try and always spend it around 80 to 100. Like once you hit 100, you're probably losing some of your like builder. <laughs> yeah, you're you're already familiar with like the dash. Ooh, do you have a dash back? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, what's gonna, that one? I was gonna avoid movement abilities for now. Okay. Yeah, I can cover that now. And so, uh, as for everyone watching, we have Corpse a Corpse, or it's really supposed to probably be pronounced Core Core, because I'm pretty sure that's French. And so that is gonna be a 40 second that. dash forward to a target. Super good for mobility, especially when you're like as a ranged DPS, like out in Kingdom Come, and then they have like a drawn mechanic, and you're like, No, I am like so far out, what am I gonna do? Well, unlike some other classes, you can just be like, Oop, I want to hit the target, and so you're already obviously familiar with the core core. <laughs> yes, um, I'm looking for it though. 
I might have to. It. Well, I, I got. Oh yeah, that, that goes back. That goes back too. So it goes in. Yeah, but the one that goes backwards is something called displacement. And so it's actually on a shorter cooldown. So let's say that you're really close to a boss, which honestly, in a raid setting, you should probably be closer just so your healers don't want to kill you, <laughs> and so that you yes. get hit by all buffs. But displacement, and it also does a little bit of damage. All right. Do I have that at level seventy? Um, yes, it's level forty skill. Okay. Like, this is not an ultimate guide for anyone watching this. Like, this is me literally just teaching on the fly. I have not actually, like, prepared. <laughs> I'm just teaching because right. I like, use it. All right. So here, let's open my, uh... Okay. Abilities. Also, uh, Verero 1 or Verero 2? What do you think? Uh, for me, I go Verero is 2. Just because it's like Jolt 2 just casually goes there. It just... I don't know, I've also been using these same keybinds for a long time. I'm, I, it feels efficient to me. Oh, so, sorry, I meant to say Ver Thunder. There's Ver Thunder 1 and 2, right? Oh, do you Thunder, use 2? Thunder 2? Don't do that. That's AoE. We're going to be talking about that in a sec. Yeah, Ver Thunder oh, 1 right. for single target. <laughs> All right, so displacement. Yeah, so displacement's gonna just throw you back. Okay, do I have it? Like this level four? Oh yeah, this one. So there we go. Ah! Exactly. And so when you get your combo, and then you I can get him. Yeah, you can just. Oh, my mouse just gave out. <laughs> no. See, oh, no. I really need that sponsorship. My mouse keeps giving in. Razor, help me. So I'd go in after I develop a mana, and then I can see it back. Yes, uh, and this Razor, also... please spend cool hundreds of dollars of peripherals. Thank oh, my you. God. I would love that. I would actually. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, that's how you basically do that. And then through that, you basically do your entire, like, off-global cooldowns. You actually, through this entire Red Mage kit, you have so much opportunity for off-global cooldown weaving. I mean, as soon as you do first stone and, like, something and cast it, it's like that opens up a GCD window. So I'm just gonna go in. One thing about the 1-2-3 combo for post to Zerglatchu to redoublement, is all of that is instant cast, and so that opens up a lot of off-global cooldown space. And so I'm just gonna go in there, enhance your cost, then I can add a flesh, then I can add a Sakandra 6 to put between the next one, then I can dash back, and I can't talk as quick as I can get my rotation. Please, you two, don't cancel me. But basically, your off-global cooldowns have so much space to fit in through that entire combo. And so I'm just like watching you do that, name it, and like making sure like, is that making sense? Oh yeah, no, I think I think I got it, and then I can uh, zip in there and do my single target combo here, and then I can be like, ah, that's scary. I'm gonna get out of there. Exactly. Okay. So I'm gonna gotcha. actually show you the second ability. So let's say that you should stick to the boss, and honestly, this is what I actually prefer. So displacement, does it do 50 more potency? Yes. But you know what, sometimes you just really want to stick glued onto the boss. So displacement is really good for like zipping back. But what I'm going to show you is engagement. And so unlike displacement, it will just flip the target, just dealing some potency of damage. But you notice how I didn't move? This is really good if yeah. you need to stay glued to the boss. And so it does share the same cooldown timer as displacement, so you need to choose between engagement or displacement. And really the choice is like, it is ideal if you can to get the 50 more potency, but if you cannot safely backflip, engagement is what you should be choosing every single time. Because it's like, it, it, it really comes down to, do you want to die or not? And you're going to lose a lot more potency okay. from death. So engagement does what? It's like Sorry. this, it's just an upfront and close, just bam. 
It's just an off-level okay. cooldown burst of damage, which is super useful. I use it a heck of a lot, actually. I probably use it more than I should for the 50 potency loss, but... I, I, I like being close to something. It's just a... it's just a smack. It's okay. Just, it's just 150 potency on, like, a 35-second cooldown timer. I'm gonna have to grab this one out of my ability guide, because... Square Enix did not put it on my bars for me. Wow, I paid $25 US, and I have to put it on my own bars. Oh my god. How dare they? <laughs> Making me work, okay. Uh, so you said it's called engagement, okay. Yes. And it is actually very useful if you don't want to backflip. Or if you're scared uh, to backflip or not familiar with the mechanics, because I have seen so many red mages... So this is level 72, so, so I can't test it out yet. Is it really? Oh, so yeah. Okay. But at least now you know it's a thing. Yes. That makes sense, though. So I'm just going to quickly go into it. So I am going to go in with engagement. And then remember, like, off global cooldown space galore. And then I come back to it like that. And just sneak. And so next, let's talk about Lucid Dreaming, because I literally just popped it by reflexes. So Lucid Dreaming is an ability that you should basically be using off of cooldown. Well, very shortly after you start a fight. And so it's at a minute cooldown, and it's slowly going to restore your MP. And now people are going to be like, okay, Red Mages don't really have that many mana issues. And you're true, in a vacuum, like, you're really seeing my MP bars barely budging. Like, in a vacuum. That's very true. But let's look at the cost of a raise. That is 2400 or 2400 MP per cast. And your cure is a <laughs> pretty expensive 500 per cast. And so you're going to run out of MP extremely quickly. And so Lucid Dreaming, uh, there's, it, does it do damage? No. Is it something that's going to blow your mind? It should when you're actually in a fight where you're needing to get a lot of revives off. It is... It's basically a catch-up mechanic, and so whenever you can, just weave it. It's off global cooldown, just bloop the snoot, and then that should be good. Is that making some sense? Yeah, that is. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Cole. That's very useful. <laughs> now, now I can save groups when I'm in extremes and everyone dies. Yeah, it's, it's so funny. You're just like, thanks, Cole. And I'm like, yes, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm very new to this recording thing. Maybe I'm being too formal, but yes, thank you for joining yes. us. For, like, <laughs> for everyone listening, like, me and Nimit are actually friends, and like, I have tormented him into... I have sucked him into being in this. I'm taking advantage of it because we don't like people. are just like, bro, we want to learn about Red Mage, and I'm just like, shoot, this is like the perfect opportunity. And so, like, and, yeah. us, we've shown like, you all these abilities into a player. You can even show me the level 80 ability, because it won't matter while I'm leveling. You just pop into uh, Bosja, and yeah, yeah, you're good to go. You are Think level 80. 80. Yeah, like they so. raise your item level and everything to like 80, and item level yeah. 430. One thing is you might develop mana before Core A Core is a Core Corpse a Corpse. I mean, you're canceled for calling Corpse a Corpse. But sometimes you get your mana too quick, especially with the ability that I'm about to show. So sometimes it is nice to stay snug to the boss and to just slowly make your way up. And one thing that I should say about all these casts is, like, look at how much I can move between casts. Like, this is insane. Like, Ast has a lot of mobility in and of itself, but it's like between those global cooldown periods, it's like that is a lot of movement that you can do. And so I cannot emphasize enough that Red Mage is very good on mobility. I mean... Is it a pain if you need to, like, move from one side of a platform to another? Sure it is. But between, like, Koi Core and Displacement as you, like, dash forward and then your way back, that is a heck of a lot of mobility. Oh, and then I just reflexively used Engagement. Yeah, if you don't want to backflip, use Engagement, but you can't backflip if Engagement is used, so be wary of that. So now I'm going to teach you about a very important ability to the rotation, which is Manification. And so I'm just going to work my mana up to 42. So both my white and my black mana are 42. And so Manification is on roughly a 2 minute cooldown timer. It's a little bit shorter. And it is a level 60 ability, so I know that you have it. I just double checked. And so it's just going to double the amount of white and black mana you have. 
And so you want it anywhere from like 40 to 50, ideally closer to 50 is better. And so what what's your white and black mana at? 148, so here, let me just cast a uh, Quick of Earth Thunder and we'll be good to go. 148, what? 100 white, 54 black. Right? No? Why are you slapping you keep me? Keep your manas equal. <laughs> <laughs> Build up yes. the black man and blow it on this. <laughs> yes. You keep your manas equal. <laughs> So this is why I just had that slow build-up at the start of, like, Jolt into the Thunder and her Arrow. Is because it's like, that, it's like, these, like, builders are so important, because you keep them equal. Absolutely. So they're all, they're both 100. Okay, now just spend it, because I need you to, like, feel the joy of using Manification. This all sparks right. joy. Alright, there we go. white man to 40 black mage does not spark joy. <laughs> Now I'm at 40, so I would use... So if you're at 40, white and black, right? Yes. Yeah, use Manification, and that should double both of them. And now you should have 80 and 80. All right, where is it on my bar? Where did I put it? Oh, there. Oh, I used it and spent it by mistake, and I have 40, 40. He says it's on cooldown. Oh, jeez. seconds, oh no. Oh no! I'll show you. What uh, it can be like. like eighty, like I, I, yeah. I'm just gonna pop my thing. <laughs> oh no, you died. <laughs> okay. Exactly. You're killing me, man. Yeah, man. So I'm just gonna build it back up to forty, just so like anyone watching is just like, this is super boring. I am so sorry. I know it's not like heavily scripted, but like people were just like, give me some red mage deets so that I can go to Bojo. Okay, so my white mana is 48, and my black mana is at 49. That is actually really good numbers, because when I do Manification, that doubles them up. And so now I'm at 96 and 98 from Manification. Which, what does that mean? I mean, you saw how quick I just did that rotation, that single trigger burst. It's right, I just go back in there. And then bam. And so what that does is it just lets you get in more of that really big spender combo, and it's extremely strong. Did you get your manification yet? Uh, 17 seconds. So yeah, I think I would just go in there, I would use my enchanted repost, uh, the Zwarachiao, Zwarchow, and the Redoublement, and then just do like the, the flare or the other one, and then you would just basically repeat it again after using Manification, right? Yeah, basically. You might need to get some Jolts and for Thunders, because the most mana that you're going to have at the end is like 20 and 20. So you need to do like Jolt and for Thunder a little bit, and then get like between 40 and 50, and then you'd use that Manification like get it back up. Ideally you should try and get it as close to 50 as possible to optimize it, but if you're a little off, like 42 or like 52, I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress that much. It's much better to use a cooldown than waste it. Yes. But yeah. So here, let me see. Build some more uh, black mana. No. Okay, magnification. Bam. All right. And there is another one. Lovely. And for flare. Boom. Oof. And these I love the animations. Are so pretty. They and are. This game has your ADS one mage. Scorch. Your Jolt 2 will be replaced by Scorch. Yeah, the Red Mage is definitely aesthetically pleasing. Nice, nice. So, now one last ability for the single target before I really start to go kooky and start going into AoE is Embolden. And so, look at your buffs right now. And so, what this ability does is it's going to buff everyone. And so what it does is it increases your own magic damage dealt by 10% and physical damage of party mm. members by 10%, which is excessively strong, especially considering it's a 20 second duration. But there is a built-in fall off. But honestly, if I'm 
like just for a primer, like without like excessive theory crafting, is don't worry about the fall off. Really, embolden is just an ability that you use to buff yourself and your teammates, and it just adds more damage. You are gonna want to eventually learn to pair it with abilities like manification and contrasixed and flesh, so that you really are getting a massive burst out of that. But in reality, just for a primer guide and just like someone new to Red Mage that's not trying to optimize like for Savage Raiding, it's it's fine. But yeah, Embolden, basically you should just use it off the cooldown. It, it buffs the entire party pretty significantly. Uh, one thing I should say is like, does it buff like healers because healers are magic? No. Does it buff like other casters? No. But it does buff yourself because you are using magic damage and so you should be wary that Enhancer, Post, Sir Wachu, and Redoublement are unaspected, but they're physical, aren't they? Oh my god, I wish that this was an ultimate guide because then I'd have the ability to like have tested all of this out. But I'm pretty sure that these are physical, and so I don't think that they actually are buffed by it, but absolutely the Flare and Scorch are absolutely, and the Holy. So the com basically every other spell is absolutely enhanced by it. Um, I'm not sure if these are physical or not, because it says unaspected damage, which leads me to think they're magic. It might just be engagement that's not affected by it, but basically, I'd use Embolden right before the Flare Scorch combo. Like, right here, between the third ability, right there, yeah, just right before that. And just power that up like crazy. Then boom, um, I'm out. Yeah, awesome. Um, so one thing is I want to see you like dance around the field a little bit and like practicing like with the movement because one of the big things about Red Mage is kind of like Sumner is it is so mobile and that is such a huge perk like independently mobile because it's just like Black Mage can move around absolutely but Red Mage like between those casts oh my god that's so much movement as well as you can like zip in during a mechanic just be like oh no and then be like, oh no, I need to get out. Oh no, I need to go in here. Oh, I'm afraid now. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> exactly. I do not like this move. I Box. hate this <laughs> mechanic. Can it please stop? Yes. Said to me in every raid after. Can it just, can it just like stop? Make it stop. Please. No. So. so Oh, is there anything else single target that I really want to talk about? I mean, one ability that you can use, which is kind of funny to say on Red Mage, is Swift Cast. And so if you open up Roll Actions now, let's just go over Roll Actions now, is you have a few different abilities here. So we already went over Lucid Dreaming, so that's going to restore your MP. You basically use it off of cooldown. In fact, generally speaking, for most on global cooldowns, you just use them off of cooldown. And for Lucid Dreaming, yeah, I just use that. But let's talk about Swift Cast. On Red Mage, it's kind of funny, but it's like you just get one spell for free. One thing I should say about Swift Cast is if you use Swift Cast, it doesn't actually allow you to get um, the instant cast of another spell. Such as if I cast Verkir on you, I need a successful cast in order to get dual cast. So using Swift Cast cancels out dual cast. It's not like you can cheat out the system and be like, haha, I just got like two dual casts, two instant casts off for once. It's like, no. Swift cast is useful if you don't like have the MP to like build up a race, but on red mage, is it the most useful thing? I mean, I do use it like for a revive when it's just like, hey, like swift cast is off of cooldown. Just throw a raise out there. It's like, it's, it, it is no big thing. If that makes any sense. <laughs> I don't. Does that make sense? I feel like that might be a weird way of saying it. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. I guess if you just like absolutely have to res someone right now and you can't afford, you know, to to cast yeah. a single spell to get your instant cast. Well, watch my character really close. I'm not gonna get the dual cast effect. I just use swift cast. So I like I literally do not have dual cast unless you cast. Okay. Um, I can let's... try it. So here, let's try. See if I heal you. Yeah. And no, I have to cast the second one. That's very lame. <laughs> it is. So swift cast okay. is less impactful than it is on like summoner, where summoner is 
it's just like it's a huge part of like their opener and everything. I mean, maybe a part of the optimized red mage opener involves it. I need to double check. I don't. From what I remember, it doesn't. But no worries about micro optimizations right now. Now let's talk about Adol. And so let's say that the target is casting something big and scary, like some fucking fudging, fudging AOE. <laughs> And so you have Adol, that you just cast it on the target, and then you're just like, boop, you're Adol. Actually, oddly enough, on Red Mage, oh, yeah, I do have it down here. I'm just like, where is my Adol? Yeah. And so that's just good for mitigating the damage. It actually makes a huge impact when, like, combined with other things, like, you're like, going to have your Red Mages apply, like, Troubadour or uh, Tactician to the party, reduce damage. It's just another thing to reduce damage. Is that seeing you? Yes, yes. <clears throat> and so the last roll action I want to talk about is Sure Cast. And so Sure Cast is actually super, super, super important because there are a lot of knockback mechanics. And so Sure Cast, one thing is that you should be careful because it only has a six second duration. And it is a long cooldown of two minutes. But for many fights, especially in Savage fights, you are going to see a knockback mechanic and you're going to be like, okay, I don't want to be knocked back. You just pop it, and then you get blown away. Or rather, not blown away. Uh, one thing is that it says spells can be cast without interruption. Um... I really don't care as much about that as the knockback effect. I mean, I'm sure that there are situations where it is useful, but really, for me, it's anti-knockback. Does that sound good? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, you showed me this when we did Emerald Weapon. <laughs> Yeah. I'm covering it also for like the video jeez. Of course, I know. <laughs> Cancel. Use it for the video. <laughs> Use it for the video. <laughs> Get that sword out of my face. Huh? Poke huh? fat cat. Yeah, right, right. Oh. See it died, it died, it like fell over, it died. <laughs> <laughs> so you have Ver Arrow 2 and Ver Thunder 3. And so at least on my hot bars, I like put it right above. And so okay. Ver Arrow 2 and then Ver Thunder 2. You're gonna notice that it's just like, okay, that's a thing, but like, how to say it. Um, so single target Jolt 2 was your entrance point, right? And then it go went into for arrow over thunder right yeah so if it's aoe i just do the same thing i do jolt two and then for thunder two or for arrow two right no actually uh okay. so it's actually just reversed ordering so you do for arrow two or for thunder two and then you go into an ability called impact oh because okay in Lovely. the video i'm going to be hovering over cast bar which is going to be like five seconds cast for impact and so uh -huh. it's like, it's the reverse, where Ver Arrow 2 and Ver Thunder 2 have the short 2 second cooldown. I mean, cast time. And then Impact is what your real big payoff is. And so you're gonna like go in with Ver Arrow or Ver Thunder and then Impact. And so it's gonna be Ver Thunder 2, Impact. Ver Arrow 2, Impact. And so that is really your AoE in a nutshell is for Thunder 2 or for Arrow 2 and then Impact, which is a super pretty, like, Lotus Flower thing. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Red Mage spells are absolutely, like, good for that. Um, and then you're noticing, like, you can target, like, white or black mana specifically using over Arrow or for Thunder, so you just try and keep it balanced. And then really like if you get into a situation where you're in aoe you just like can dash for it and then enhance millionaire enhance millionaire enhance millionaire does that kind of make sense there that's so just just like this yes exactly and that's your way to like spend it in an aoe situation because it's like the single target rotation is absolutely absolutely devastating but there can be, or at least there is no doubt in my mind at least, that Enhanced Millionette in an AoE situation is so much better. I mean, maybe if you have like three mobs or less it's better, but yeah, if it's like 200 damage, just bam, like crazy in front. Nice, nice. 
And then don't forget that you also have that off global cooldown space that's opened up by using that for that impact. And it's just nice, nice. All right. So I, that's uh, yeah. I think that's it. I think I understand. Thank you very much. I think I, could, I think I could go confidently into a dungeon now and get a level and then hop into Bosch. <laughs> <laughs> that was the goal. I was thinking, yeah. like, is there any other skills that I want to like cover here? Uh, da, 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 just going over the entire list. I, I mean, you could talk about Adol, but I feel like you would never use that. What the heck would anyone ever use Adol? Like See, PvP, maybe. I knew you weren't listening to me. I'm just like, he's not using skills. He must be like texting. Adol? You use Adol? Yes. So Adol, what? I described before. If you are listening. <laughs> it's a debuff, but like, yeah. why do I care? I just want to blow them up. Your healer will care. Your tank will care. <laughs> Your raid group will care. <laughs> so if that's you not my DPS. It's lowering my DPS. <laughs> Toxic WoW player. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but Yes. a tank buster for the sake of of your healers and your tanks which is funny coming from the rest of the group doing CE <laughs> you oh. want to use Adol <laughs> always but my parse the parse it's off the global cooldown now. oh okay see exactly so this space here between the global cooldown yeah off the global cooldown and then you have debuffed it and now your tanks and are like fuck yeah i mean fudge yes <laughs> i'm gonna have to edit the curses and yeah what else do i want to cover um i guess at this point do you like have like any questions about like the core rotation or anything no i, mean, I think, think you covered it all i think i just need to practice it and i should be uh good and having some fun as a red mage also, look at all this mobility. Isn't that disgusting? That's so much mobility. It's just like, oh. Oh yeah, it's, 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 it's great. Boom, boom, It doesn't boom. feel like a demonology warlock in WoW. That is not mobile. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. Well, thank you everyone who is still listening to this. <laughs> your patience and hopefully this actually helps a lot of people because i know that a lot of people are looking for like a red mage primer and i'm just like shoot when am i gonna do that and so you have this like red mage primer here and i hope that, that helps everyone and likewise yeah i hope it's helpful what yeah i hope it's helpful for them oh my god i think it will be it's helpful I for me i actually had so many people like dm me being like okay like i want to like do red mage I know that it's like really good in Boja, but I, I like just slammed with level 80 and now I'm super freaking overwhelmed and I have no idea what any of these skills are. And people say Red Mage is like pretty like good and solid to play and I just don't get it and have all these pieces fit together and yeah, I'm hoping that this can really answer those questions for those people because trust me, I've, I've actually thought a lot of that so um, yeah, I hope that that makes sense to a lot of people and I totally know people are gonna like clock me on the footage and just be like you just didn't read your GCD right that's that's true I I I suck at talking and, and, and walking at the same time I can't I can't walk and chew bubblegum people I <laughs> I think the funny truth is <laughs> I actually suck at doing my rotation and talking people are gonna be like canceling me when I start streaming and be like Rrr. why is he so bad but again, <laughs> thank you everyone for who's tuned in, and um, oh my gosh, happy like Bojan to the front and patch 1.5, I mean 5.4, 5, okay I'm just gonna stop talking now, you talk for me. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, so yeah, th thanks cool for the guide, uh, yeah, it's a pleasure uh, here being on your channel, real, real uh, privilege to be able to take part in this video, and yeah, I don't know what to say, I mean... Rothgars are awesome. Fourteen's fun. Uh, all of you that uh, played non Rothgars should become Rothgars because they're they're the best. <laughs> oh, and uh, and what else? 
Oh. Uh, NVIDIA, if you're watching, uh, send us some 3090s. We'd love to review them. I'll even unbox it and oh, say that it's good. I was talking about the GPU. I was like, what's a 3090? Yes, yeah, they're reselling for about $3,000 right now because there's no stock. It's crazy. Oh, but that's uh, something for another video. Stop. We're turning <laughs> it quickly into our podcast. Stop. Oh, 